Ridley still trying to cope with the tragic loss of his 22-year-old sister, China. A moment of He broke it to me. He's like, well, IT, I just traded you. If he had been a free agent last summer when he was healthy, he would have gotten a nine-figure contract. And he sacrificed his health under the supervision of Boston's medical staff and feels Ainge then dealt him. <laughs> Bottom line is we all know we got breaking news. Uh, if you want to consider this breaking news, Isaiah Thomas has been picked up by the Charlotte Hornets. You know, uh, this is uh, an another one, of, another team on this guy's list of that, that's endless. His, his list of teams that he was on is endless, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is crazy. Uh, but I'm here to tell you right now, the career of Isaiah Thomas truly saddens me. It, it, it really has me sad. And mind you, I, I, I truly was thinking about this for a while. There's a lot of players in the NBA that truly saddened me. You understand? And Isaiah Thomas is one of them. You know, uh, it makes me sick to my fucking stomach. You understand? Uh, when I when I see what just transpired with this guy, you know, you're looking at a guy who should be sitting uh, just 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 wonderful right now. This dude should be sitting up there. He should be making that making that super max money right now. He should he should be sitting somewhere tucked away. You know, uh, this guy right now, I'm telling you, he, he, he financially, I, I don't think he's doing um, as best as good as he should should be. You understand? I think that's I think that's uh, fair to say. The man ain't broke. But come on, this is this is a fall from grace, um, especially when you look at the contract that Boston was about to give him. We're going to get all into that in a second. Um, and we want to get into the Hornets and what he may possibly bring to the Charlotte Hornets, if any. You know, uh, but to be honest with you, let's start from the beginning. The man came into the NBA in a fucked up situation. The man was drafted by the Sacramento Kings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just saying, with all due respect, the man was drafted by Sacramento. He was the... Um, I believe this guy was the 30th pick, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, in the, oh no, pardon me, not the 30th. I think he was the 60th pick. Uh, don't, don't, um, y'all, y'all fact check me on that. I'm not even 100 percent sure. I just freestyled that one, but I do have some some good notes. Uh, he was the 60th pick, if I'm not mistaken, y'all. But what I want to tell you is this. Uh, just fast forward with Sacramento. I think that they had some decent pieces there. Uh, but like I said, when you were with the Sacramento Kings, it's just a hellstorm. You have Rudy Gay, DeMarcus Cousins. They had some pieces there, but they just couldn't cultivate it. But let's go to the Phoenix Suns, you know, because uh, in Phoenix, he was uh, put in a crazy um, trifecta. Uh, and I, and y'all know what I mean by this trifecta, where he was playing pretty much with two starting point guards along with himself. So it was just one big cluster fuck. You understand? When you talk about Eric Bledsoe and Goran Dragic, right? That's fair. You know, but where I really want to get into is Boston, because I think that's where, um, because I, we could get all into the beginning and all of that. It really, it really uh, drew his ugly head in Boston, because that's where Isaiah Thomas became a superstar. Yes, the man was a superstar. Uh, he knocked off several teams, you understand? Well, like I said, th this guy, Isaiah Thomas, was a force, you know, uh, to the point where they wanted to, the Boston Celtics wanted to give this man a tribute, which they did give him a tribute. But it was a situation between him and Paul Pierce. The night Paul Pierce was, I think they was honoring him. You know, they was uh, gonna do a tribute for Isaiah Thomas and they all hell broke loose behind that, you know. Uh, it's crazy because his first year with Boston, he put up 19 points. You understand? Because, my, this is the glory days, ladies and gentlemen. Before we get to the fall from grace, we got to get to the glory days. The man put up 19 points his first season in Boston. Solid. His second season, the man put up 22, right? His final season, last and final season in Boston, the man put up 28 points, ladies and gentlemen, um, and five assists. You know, uh, so the man damn there was putting up a 30 pot. You know, um, and, and it was spectacular. If anybody knows that year, Isaiah Thomas, I mean, he was in the MVP discussion. He was a top player in the league, man, seriously. He, and, and mind you, he was, I believe, like leading the league in fourth quarter scoring, if I'm not mistaken. He was one of the top fourth quarter players around that time period. Um, and it, like I said, the way the way Boston and Danny Ainge showed this guy the door, man, it was foul. It was one of the most egregious situations ever. You know, the man played when his sister passed away for, for crying out loud. Uh, I'm just saying, and like I said, he, he gave his heart to Boston. You know, I, I don't think it was even about the money. I think he truly loved Boston. You know, uh, that, that's, that's where he became a home, his home. You know, that was his home. You know, uh, he just became a player there. You know, when you look at all of the trials and tribulations, 
Boston was going to be his stomping ground. And I thought it was very fucked up where they waited till he had, uh, you know, he had some injury issues to pretty much show his ass the door. Where they traded for Kyrie Irving. And, and mind you, we all know how that worked out with Kyrie. But I, I thought that trade was very idiotic. You know, because I felt like he went to Cleveland. It was crazy because when he went to Cleveland, they had him acting like he was going to be the savior or something, you know, up there in Cleveland. You know, but that was just the beginning of the end because we all know what happens when you go and play behind LeBron James. You become the scapegoat, and yes, he was. You know, mind you, Isaiah was going through uh, the hip injury, so he couldn't ever start that season with Cleveland. But the man did come back and put up 14 points per game. You know, uh, this guy that has stints with the Lakers, you know, Denver, Washington, the Pelicans, Dallas, uh, and like I said, and then, like I said, back with the Lakers. I believe he was with the Lakers twice. He was there with the Lakers when Lonzo Ball was there, too, if people don't remember. He was there that rookie season, um, just taking a trip down memory lane. So this situation where this guy was bouncing all over the league, this been going on for years. You understand? You're talking about a guy who was on the verge of a supermax. You understand? I, did you hear what I just said, ladies and gentlemen? This man was on the verge of a supermax. To, to just the fall from grace, it truly saddens me, man. I'm telling you. Because, like I said, this guy was truly on the verge of something special. And and I think it's fair to say he, he's never going to get that contract that um that he that he once warranted. You understand? And I think that sucks. You know, I hope that I, I hope Isaiah Thomas can revitalize his career. You know, I hope that the Charlotte Hornets is a safe haven for him. You know, uh, playing behind LaMelo Ball, I think LaMelo is going to give him all the opportunities to, to succeed. You're playing with some guys that are very selfless. You know, uh, I think it should, it should work out. You know, I think he, he definitely, he could be a significant upgrade over my man Ish Smith. But Ish Smith is solid. So, I mean, just to, just to, Ish Smith ain't nothing to scoff at. Because right? he's great in the role that he does. Not to say Ish Smith is, he, he's never on the career like the, the, the way Isaiah Thomas is career path. Ish Smith can't even touch it. Especially during those Boston days. But the thing is, the role that Ish Smith plays, he's a star in his role. He come off the bench and he do his thing. He put up buckets. Oftentimes, he got the coach thinking, should they roll with him or or continue to uh, leave the starters on the bench? So that's be that. Sometimes that's the conundrum. But nonetheless, man, uh, this is this is crazy. Uh, the career of Isaiah Thomas it truly saddens me, y'all. I would definitely like to know y'all thoughts. You know, uh, but like I said, in Denver with Mike Malone, Mike Malone really just gave him his ass to kiss. You know, where he put up eight points there. He put up 12 in Washington, seven with New Orleans, six in Dallas, and then nine points uh, recently with the Los Angeles Lakers. So things have just not, things have been nasty, you understand, in terms of Isaiah Thomas and the fall from grace, how the man went from 28 points to Supermax to just getting ping-ponged around the league like a, you know, like, just like nobody's business. He's like, he like he's almost like he yesterday's news. He's just getting passed all over the place like a bad habit. You know, uh, and like I said, this this sucks. You know, because this guy, this guy was a, is a former all-star, a former superstar. You know, uh, Boston damn near had a team tailor-made around this guy. You know, uh, so it, it's disgusting what has taken place. But I want to know y'all thoughts. Does Isaiah Thomas' career sadden you as much as it saddens me? You know, and like I said, Danny Ainge, you filed for that. But like I said, business is business. You know, I hate business. It sucks because you have situations like this, you know, um, and it's sad. You know, let's hope the best for Isaiah Thomas as he rolls into the Charlotte Hornets. You know, uh, hopefully he can have a similar situation that Montrez Harrell is having. You know, but mind you, Montrez is not he's having way much better of a career than Isaiah Thomas, especially around, around these days. You know, Isaiah, I mean, Trez hasn't went through the trials and tribulations as Isaiah Thomas. So let's hope, let's hope for the best. You know, I think the Hornets are building something. Who knows? Is Isaiah, can Isaiah Thomas stay with the Charlotte Hornets or is his 10 days inevitable? It's flight sports TV. Let's talk. Isaiah Thomas, his career truly saddens me, man. It's clear. There's no debate. It's flight sports.